Welcome back to Monroe Live. I am Carl and I'm here in our shop. Now, of course, Monroe is a vehicle benchmarking company, uh, not just vehicles, but many other things. So you'll see when you look at all of our racks and all of our different displays, we tear apart vehicles. We try and understand the costs of all of the little pieces and the effects of these types of design decisions on the finished product. So unfortunately, we cannot tear apart this Mercedes EQE, but we're going to look at it just from the surface and understand some of the choices that Mercedes has made for a vehicle that they're trying to sell for $106,000. So let's have a look. Now, when I first look at this vehicle, look down the side and across the front, um, to me, it's very egg shape. Uh, I'm thinking of $106,000. For the exterior, what type of exterior decoration am I seeing for that? And it's very, very simple. Uh, there's not a lot of extras. There's not a lot of flair. It has a unique, of course, Mercedes design in the simulated front grille, but there's really not a lot on the exterior style-wise that I would say really adds up to that $106,000 price point. So this vehicle is designed to not have a hood that is opened by the customer or the owner. It would be considered service only. So there's no frunk under there. As a matter of fact, if you were trying to refill the washer bottle for your windshield washer, there's a side access panel for that. We've seen that on a few vehicles that have just decided to do a service only hood, but it's something that I really want to make mention of that the owner, the driver would not be opening this hood. Looking at the door, the first thing that I notice is a small quarter window. I understand why they did that. They don't want the glass, a movable piece of glass, going all the way to the front because it would cause some packaging issues with this design, especially with how high this glass is in the front. So they've created a separation so that only this portion of glass moves through the door. However, in my opinion, it makes it look a little off since we have this section, this section, and then our movable glass. The wheels, uh, a simple decorative wheel with, of course, the aero panels to close it out to give us uh, some aerodynamics, but it's not very attractive to me for the style that I would like. There's not a lot of exterior styling that really says to me $106,000 until I go to get in the vehicle. Look at how that handle presents itself. Now, when we looked at the Cadillac, a $65,000 vehicle, the handle was basically just a button. You would press the button, the door would open three inches, you'd grab the edge of the door and open up. This actually has a functioning handle that pops out and presents itself to you when you press that button. The overall look of this handle, I mean, look at it. It looks like a piece of jewelry. It's lit up, it's chrome, it's very, very decorative but you don't see that until you start to get into the vehicle. So let's look at this door. We either have a chromed plastic or brushed metal in some of these areas. Um, I like the way that metal trim looks and feels. It makes it seem somewhat substantial and it makes me see a value for that $106,000. But when I look across this door, okay, I have a wrapped armrest area. This is a wrapped door upper. This is all just mold and colored plastic from here down. So again, $106,000, what am I paying for? I'm paying for wrapping, wrapping, some high-end decorative trim pieces, a few of them. But it's not high-end throughout the entire door. So these are real leather seats, but it's a fairly aggressive animal grain. Looking at the side of this seat, you can see all of the wrinkles. You can see the thickness in the animal grain. Normally for a high-end vehicle, you'd expect a Napa grain, something that's very supple and very fine. So that is not the type of material that they chose for this vehicle. Now I've made mention on several vehicles. Now the um, Hyundai Genesis, the Cadillac, talking about the difference between the perforations and the stitching. So with the Genesis, we knew that they had multiple sizes of perforations, but it was unique to the actual pattern of the seat. For the Cadillac, it was a uniform perforation that was just cut and then sewn into the seat. This is another one that is unique to the seat. You can see how these perforations actually follow this quilting seam. Those seams fan out going across the seat. 
So I cannot use a roll of material with perforations on it here and here and use the same roll of material. These are pre-cut and then they actually have to go through basically a CNC process to punch all of these holes and make a material that then can go into sewing and quilting. So there's a little, well actually there's a lot more labor involved in that. There's more of a waste of material involved in that since I now have to have a blank that then goes into a machine for the perforation. So there's a higher cycle time associated with this type of execution. Now that cycle time for me shows the value and it shows the money. So I start to understand, all right, I am paying for this process in getting my $106,000 material, my $106,000 vehicle. But let's look at this IP. So we have this large section, but what is in this section? We have a wrapped top pad. We have that decorative light pipe, which is along the air vent. And then this large dead space that they have their wood grain in. Now, I don't know if this is real wood grain or if just a simulated wood grain. Uh, they have a decorative edge all the way around it. So I was trying to see if I could find an edge to really point that out, but I was not able to. But so this large dead space, what is the point of that dead space? Well, most likely packaging. They probably have a lot of stuff in this instrument panel that they had to stack and package. But by trying to keep a sleek exterior to the customer, uh, they end up having this huge section that's basically just acting as a close-up panel. It's not doing anything. It's not presenting me with any type of a feature, but it's just making this large, tall, dead spot, also creating my very, very high IP to my eyeline. When we talk about the screens, we have seen multiple screens in vehicles. We have seen some vehicles try and make a simulated large screen that has a large trim panel, but it has multiple smaller screens behind it. We have seen some vehicles actually create a large single screen. So here we have two medium sized screens, one for the instrument cluster, one for basically a control panel. I like the minimal detailed edging. It gives me an actual edge knowing that is where I'm ending. Um, some people like the look of this black of the screen going all the way to the edge. I kind of like it being haloed. However, trying to make something haloed like that, making this trim is very, very difficult because you have to have a great tolerance in your mold so that you don't end up having any tight spots or gaps. So I respect the tool manufacturers and I respect how the engineers was able to do that. Um, but it's something that most people would probably never notice piano black and a, just a giant piece of piano black for this section. We don't have a lot of buttons in this vehicle except for in the steering wheel, a start and stop, and then we have our screen. So we have a sliding tray here, providing us access to the cup holders and then our USB ports. Other than that, we have just a matte, or not a matte, we have a piano black gloss finish. Now this is a $106,000 vehicle. For me, when we're talking about the materials that are used on the interior of a vehicle, whenever you see something that says leather, where is the leather in the vehicle? Normally it's just in the perforated section of the seat. Everything else is vinyl. I've had some very disappointing um, experiences in vehicles trying to figure out what vehicle I wanted to purchase. And it's been due to the armrests. The armrest on the door and the armrest on the center console. They end up using a very inexpensive vinyl on some brands of vehicles for those armrests. I just find those materials too cheap when I'm trying to be at a reasonably mid-priced vehicle. I like anything that I touch and feel to be more premium. And I think cheaping out on armrests is a problem area. But this has a nice material even though it has that really thick animal grain. Now, sometimes when you look at the rear seat of a vehicle, depending on the body style and the body shape, the seat cushion itself is the entire height of the seat. So it almost seems like they take a cushion and they put it on the vehicle floor. But you'll see this has a very, very tall section 
um, in front of the seat. So what does that do for us? That makes a vehicle that we're not kicking up our legs while sitting in the back seat. This has a very nice, comfortable position for the back seat occupant. I really like that. Now, because this is a very tall vehicle, that's how they're able to get away with doing that. So I could be mistaken, but as I look at the rear end of this vehicle, I'm not seeing anything to actually open the hatch. Now, some of them we saw where they've had, of course, the hidden ledge. Uh, I do believe on the Cadillac, it was the actual emblem itself that you would press to open up. Uh, with this one, I'm using the key fob and looking around and things that are accessible to me with this closed, I don't really see a release latch. I do want to make mention of the lighting in this vehicle and you saw it when we looked in the front as well. The lower areas and the foot wells, there was a lot of light. So that is a combination of course of the interior color and the amount of lighting that is being provided. But I like how bright everything is, especially in the cargo area. I don't like it when it just looks like a black hole. So the amount of lighting that is provided on the tailgate, inside of the uh, cargo area, I appreciate all of that. So if you wanna see one of the little annoying things, we talked about 12 volt outlets in one of our previous videos. And in that vehicle, they had a 12 volt outlet that was hidden inside of the center console. And the question became, well, when are you actually going to use a 12 volt outlet? And in my answer is it depends on what type of vehicle accessories you have. So in the IP, I said, well, let's say you had a radar detector. Well, maybe you need that because it has a 12 volt base or a tire inflator. If I had a tire inflator, most likely that is 12 volt. And look, we have a 12 volt outlet right here for the tire inflator. So it at least puts it closer to where I would actually be using it. If I was pulling it out of my cargo area, I would plug it in there. I wouldn't be plugging it in inside of my center console. But where's the problem with that? Well, look at that color. It is black. And this is a light cream interior. Well, most likely they could not find that feature with that door off the shelf in this color. It's basically made in black. So now we have that big black plastic cover that's just kind of sticking out in space. It's just those little details that start to bug you if it's something that you're looking for over, over time. So $106,000 for a vehicle that has a very simple exterior design. It has a few features that are exceptional and impressive like those exterior door handles. Looking at the seats, we do have leather seating surfaces. However, I question the quality of the leather. We have some nice wrapped materials going across the top of the IP, the door, and then into the armistice of the door. Once we get below that, it's all just plastic. Looking at the front section of that IP, we see that wood grain, which I'm not sure if it's artificial wood grain. I assume that it is artificial wood grain, but it's just this large panel that really does nothing. We have a medium sized center screen and then the small cluster screen. So when I look at this and I'm trying to figure out, am I getting my value for $106,000? If I compare it to the Cadillac at $65,000, no. I would not see this and see that type of value. Um, I would expect this to be less expensive in line with the Cadillac. But you have to look at the other features. Maybe it's just a wonderful battery. Maybe it has an enormous amount of range. Maybe there are other features that other people here at Monroe can speak to. But when I look at this interior, I do see clean surfaces, but I don't see the value that justifies $106,000. So for Monroe Live, thank you for watching. And if you have any interest in vehicles and these types of reviews, please go ahead and subscribe and stay tuned to our future chat. Sorry. Let me start that again. Oop, I'm locked out. For Monroe Live, thank you for watching. And if you have found this interesting and I like this type of look at a vehicle, seeing the things through my eyes or other engineers' eyes, please go ahead and subscribe and stay tuned to our future episodes. Have a good day.